All right, here we go in three, two. This is uh, This Week in Sports. I'm your host, Josh Jacko. It's uh, Caleb, the producer. And in This Week in Sports, the Oilers moving on to round three, the Western Conference final. Since I last recorded, we took out the Flames in five. It was absolutely tremendous. Been living on that glory every time I watch the goal. Every time I think about it, I just get put puts a smile on my face. The Blue Jays finally get back in the winning streak. They uh, they swept the Angels, which is quite impressive, considering uh, Otani was pitching one of those games. And all my predictions have seemed to come true so far. There's a game seven later tonight between New York and Carolina, and that is the series. The one series I said was going to go get to seven games, and sure enough, it it is tonight. But uh, first things first. Did, yo, did I show you my hand, Caleb? Look at this. Look at this bruise on my hand. That was from playing baseball, and and taking a taking a one of uh, one of Terrace's like super super fast throws, right in the palm. Ooh. Yeah, and now now it's like all it's been bruised the last couple of days. Did it mess you up when you were golfing yesterday? No, surprisingly, it didn't mess me up when I was golfing. But what did mess me up a little bit was the fact that it was our first round of golf, and I took my dad out because uh, it was his birthday. It was for his birthday present, and and I totally, completely forgot that I had my I left my clubs at Naomi's, my sister's, because um, when we took those pictures for the podcast there, I brought all my equipment there, and I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to leave my clubs here for now because I don't want to bring haul them around and whatnot. And then I thought they were in my ride, but they weren't in my ride. They, they were in my sister's closet, and I was trying to call her that in the, yesterday morning, and she was still sleeping. So we had to end up renting. Uh, or, uh, they just hooked it up, actually. We didn't have to pay for it. Renting a driver, and I didn't even have a putter either. So I, did. I went in there. I grabbed up, like, oh, I don't have a driver. Do you think I can uh, rent one? They're like, yeah, yeah, we'll just hook you up. And then as, as we were on the putting green and practicing before our round starts, I'm like, what the f- I don't even have a putter in this makeshift <laughs> makeshift bag. I, I luck, I'm fortunate enough to have two golf bags, um, kind of passed down from from my dad. And the the good one is at my sister's with all with all the necessary clubs. And this one just had like I don't know like five clubs. I didn't even notice it didn't it didn't have a putter, but they were able to hook it up at uh, I think it was called Legends. Shout out to Legends. Uh, it was a great course. We've been there before. And we didn't do too too bad. I mean, we got it was it was it was interesting. There was this uh, lady who was golfing by herself, and uh, so the guy at the first hole was what asked us if we if we minded if she joined us. And we're like, sure, why not? Why not? And this this lady, um, older older Asian lady, like her second year playing apparently. Like she just started playing golf yes uh, last year. And she was doing just as good as us, if not better, on some of the holes. It was freaking crazy. Me, me and my dad kept looking at each other like, oh, my. Like She just started playing last year. And she was good. She was a good time. She actually had a lot of good pointers for us, too, which is like we've been playing. I've been playing since I was, I don't know, like 18, I guess, or 17, something like that. First time I went actually golfing, I think, was in high school. But I've been mini golfing all that. And this, this lady – just started golfing. Her name was Sue, and she was like giving us pointers and telling us like take your time, breathe, relax, stuff like that, and helping in a, in a lot of ways. And overall, I mean, it was our first round, so I think my dad beat me by I think one, like one shot or something. But we tied on the back nine, and I mean, we didn't even break a hundred, but uh, it was it was a great time. I did. I can't believe it. I was able to par the last hole. I didn't par any holes. I think I got a couple bogeys, but I was able to par the 18th, which uh, I was really proud of. And yeah, it was it was a great time. It was windy as hell, though. That was that was the one kind of uh, downside of it, just because the wind kind of. I was wearing shorts and just a t-shirt, so it was it got a little cold time to time because the sun wasn't out completely. It's a little bit of clouds, but. For the most part, it was it was it was tremendous, and I can't wait to go out again, um, with my own my own club, my own driver, my whatnot. Oh, but I adopted one of Dad's clubs, his sand wedge, because it was my favorite club. Every time I used it, oh my god, it was perfect. I, I didn't even use a pitching wedge; I used a sand wedge whenever I needed a chip shot, and both 
like I'd say like ninety five percent of the shots were just exactly where I wanted them. The the height was nice, right. and it was just every time every time I got on on the green. So I adopted that that club, the sand wedge, and uh, I think it's like my new favorite club. And yeah, just improving throughout. Finally, finally improving. Um, I know I know I didn't break a hundred or. But it felt like my game overall was improving. Every time I would have a shitty shot or a shitty hole, the next shot or the next hole, um, I would just kill it. So so was dad. Dad, dad. My dad was about that too. Like he, would, every time we would have we we were off for for a shot, we would come back with a good shot um, after that. So definitely shows improvement. And uh, like I said, I can't wait to go again. I'm so I'm glad that that the big big I have this big ass bru- bruise in my palm from playing ball good thing that didn't affect um didn't affect my play i'm talking like a pro didn't affect my play who cares <laughs> i couldn't even make the use that as an excuse uh regardless and then on my other arm freaking when i came home i was so tired yesterday passed out on the couch freaking slept on my wrist it's finally like okay now but i slept on it like this or some shit like like Marty McFly in Back to the Future when he sleeps in the most awkward position. But I had it like under me and I think that'll be all right. But my bones aren't as young as they used to be. So as, as I'm sure all of you know, getting older, uh, different things start to hurt different times for different reasons. But I'm still in my 20s. Still in my 20s. But uh, yeah, Onto the Oilers, absolute domination over the Calgary Flames. I can't believe they kept saying that they're getting beat by one player. Yet, Leon Dreisaitl setting records, 17 points in five games. That's the most by any player in a five-game playoff series in the history of the NHL, in the history of the playoffs. So, where do we got? We got the applause right here. And so... That was tremendous. I, I went. Uh, I was out downtown for that final win, and that was uh, that was a great, great time. Watched it. Actually, watched it at first round. I watched all of it at first round with the cousins. The plan was to go to the ice to the Moss Pit after the second period to catch the third, but the way the drinks were coming out and the way that we were ordering, I, I, I didn't anticipate us having enough time to get there. So we're like, okay, well, fuck it, we'll just watch it here. And then, of course, it goes to overtime, and then we're like, okay, well. Now we have to watch it here. <laughs> we have to watch the rest of the game. And then, of course, Connor McDavid, who else, comes up with uh, just over fi- uh, just under five minutes gone in the first overtime period, gets a backhand pass from Leon, who just continues the hot streak and hopefully he continues in this upcoming series, finds Connor streaking in in the slot. Connor snipes it. Beats it, the one his best sally. He's got a lot of good sallies in his in his career, but you could tell the joy on his face comes through center ice. Just the biggest smile for his biggest uh, biggest goal in his career, most important game of his career, and he's the one who won it. And you could just tell like how much it meant to him. And it was funny though in his post game interview with Scott Oak right after it. He said he was, he actually said he was bad all game. Like he wasn't, his legs weren't under him. These are his words. He's like, I wasn't at a bad game. And to think that you could have a bad game like that and still come on top and still produce in overtime when it counts most, that shows you the kind of elite player that Connor McDavid is. I don't think anyone can deny that. And now it's going to be, it's going to be, everyone's, Framing it as McDavid versus McKinnon, and that's okay. I mean, that that's a selling point, but what, what like it's it's not just one player, and we've proven that. It should the, the storyline should almost be freaking McKinnon versus Drysaddle because Drysaddle is just on fucking fire, and 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 not to mention Kane. I think has like twelve goals or something. I gotta double check that, but like he has, he's on fire. Drysaddle's on fire. Smitty is on fire, even though he gave up four goals. Man, he made some really really big saves and if he didn't make some of those some of those stops um 
particularly early in the game, um, he made a really, really big save that if he let in, uh, the game, the, the complexion would be completely different. Um, yeah, I, 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 I rewatched it again yesterday. Sportsnet was, uh, had it on. So I, they had on their NHL in 30. They, I think they had all the games in the Calgary and Edmonton, uh, Battle of Alberta series. And we watched the last couple there after, after, after we're done golfing. And, and, uh, yeah, just, I can watch that over and over and over again. Cause I watched it. <laughs> I watched the full thing right after it happened the, the, the day after, um, or the two days later. Cause I, yeah. Cause so what ended up happening that night was, uh, party downtown all over downtown, the Moss pit lot ended up losing Adam and Earl. I don't know what happened to them, but they, they, they don't even know what happened to them either, but they had a, they had a good time. They got home. They got home all good and, and whatnot. Ended up, uh, yeah, walking walking around downtown, and then my sister works at a bar downtown. I think it's called Black Ship, I believe. It's on Jasper. And she, I, 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 was, uh, I wasn't sure if she was working or not, or if she was still working at that point, because it was like late. It was like, I think it was like midnight or something. And so I go go check her out at her bar, and she's just getting off getting off work. And I was only in the it was trippy. I was only in the bar for like twenty minutes or something. And when I when I got it when I walked into the bar, the streets were bumping. Everyone was honking their horns. Everyone was celebrating. And then like half an hour later, twenty minutes later, I, I walk out. You would never know there was a playoff game or a playoff series win, given it it was it was the it was a weekday and it was um. It was pretty late at that point. It was like closer to one, but it was it was just trippy going into the bar, celebration coming out. The streets are like deserted, but the streets will not be deserted tomorrow, Tuesday, game time. I just gotta confirm because I'm so used to these late games. But I think it starts at six p.m. Uh, local time here in Edmonton. Let's check this out. Yeah, tomorrow at six. Oh, and that's the only game on the NHL schedule for tomorrow. So that's going to be all eyes on on uh, Colorado and Edmonton. We first two games are in Colorado, next two are in Edmonton and then it's back and forth for the for the rest of the series. I think this series is going to go well, I don't even know if I should do my predictions yet because the other series isn't over. Well, my my other predictions for round 2, they they've all been correct cuz I'm a fucking pro at this. So I called Tampa over Florida. I thought Florida was going to win two. Uh, I think they got swept. Just double check here. Yeah, they got swept, but I still called Tampa. Uh, Colorado in St. Louis. I had Colorado winning it in six is what I said. And sure enough, Colorado won it in six. I had Edmonton winning it Oh. Uh, over Calgary in six because I thought they were, I, I wanted them to win it here at home, but we didn't even need six games. We 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 destroyed them in five. They only had one good game, and that was that was a one off that game one that we don't talk about. And then the one series of the four, which I predicted going to seven games. Sure enough, is going to seven games. I called New York winning. So frick, I may as well go four for four. New York's going to win tonight, and the matchup will be Tampa, New York. I see Tampa going all the way to the Stanley Cup final, and but we beat Colorado. I think we have a really good chance of beating Tampa. I will do my official predictions. I guess. Well, shit. I don't know. I may as well do them now because I don't. It might be a few days to, uh, till we record next. So fuck it. I'll do it right now. Where's a pen? You got a pen? Kill it right over here. Okay. Well, I'll do the West one. I'll do the Edmonton and Colorado one, and then. If New York wins, I will, I will do that one. But t- I, I'm already calling Tampa going to the Stanley Cup final anyways. So I, I'm calling Tampa. Doesn't matter if it's New York or Carolina. They're going to win it in... They're going to win it in... Well, oh, fuck. If, if New York makes it through, they're on a high. And they're feeling really, really good about themselves. So if New York makes it through, I still think Tampa's going to win, but it's going to be a longer series than I think if Carolina makes it through. 
Either way, I'm going to say just average. I'll go Tampa in six. And then I got Edmonton over Colorado in ooh, um that's tough because they are a good team I'll go Edmonton in six as well because we're going to do it at home the energy is going to be so electric in the home games here that I don't think Colorado is going to be able to overcome it because uh, I mean it has been it, actually in, in game four though in the Calgary series, I noticed every, there was a little bit of nervousness in the fan base. Remember uh, cruising downtown before game four? And it, it didn't seem as hype as people were in game three. But, it, I mean, it didn't matter. We, we won anyways. But that, that just... Uh, we, we, need, we need more hype in this next round because, shit, we win. We, win, we beat Colorado. We're winning the cup. And... Uh, yeah, I firmly believe that. And my it was actually my dad who first said that. And I was like, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good take. I like that because Colorado is so good. Colorado is damn near as good as Tampa. The thing about Tampa is they won two in a row. Someone's got to stop them, right? Someone's got to stop them. It may as well be us. So go, Oilers, go. Cannot wait for tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to oh, it's gonna be freaking epic, man. I don't even – it's an early game. So it starts at 6 – I'm going to be downtown somewhere to watch, and I might go to the watch party. Uh, I might be at the Moss Pit. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet exactly where I'm going to watch it, but i, I got to be downtown for it. i got to see it. i gotta, I got to be there with the five and all the thousands of people. So, How much is the watch, <clears throat> How much is the watch party? Oh, it's only five bucks, bro. It's only five, and it, it's, oh. it goes to charity. So it's just a matter of – I was discussing with Dad yesterday. The drinking uh, – I, I guess, yeah. It's not letting the cat out of the bag too much, but the drinking rail – is the best seats. Oh, well, especially for the watch party, but it, they're also like, they're like my favorite seats even to watch a game live at Rexall Place because they're like, they're the last row basically and they're not, they're like stools like this, right? Yeah. And, uh, and the thing about the watch parties is you get your own, you get your own personal TV like right in front of you, which is mint. You don't have to watch it like way on the Jumbotron or whatever. So, if I do go to the watch party, I am, I'm going to try to get a drinking rail seat because it doesn't look like they sell them on Ticketmaster. You, they just give them to people, I think. I think that's why they upgraded us a couple of times that, that one time we went because they could tell us we could tell that we were uh, a little lit and they're like, okay, well, let's get these people their own kind of area. And so they, they brought us to the, uh, the drinking rail and then from there, they even upgraded us even further to the, the Sky Lounge, which was pretty cool. But I almost prefer the drinking rail um, for the watch parties because it has that own, your own little TV there. But yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see what I end up doing. Um, either way, it's gonna be a freaking hell of a time. The city's gonna be bumping. I cannot wait. Everyone's excited. This is the first time. I mean, we've all heard it. This is the first time we are in the Western Conference Final since we made it to the Stanley Cup Final, Game Seven of the Stanley Cup Final in two thousand and six. And so it was funny. Someone, I can't remember who it was, brought up the possibility, Caleb, that we could play Carolina in the Stanley Cup final, which would be the most fucked up shit, most nuts. Yeah, that'd be insane. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I, I'd rather, I don't know. I don't know if I'd really want that, even though I think Carolina is a weaker team than Tampa, just on paper. I, just those demons, you know, it'd be. With the irony, you know, if that ha know. if that happened, to, to slay those demons. I know to then to beat them, but it's like it's like oh, ooh. But fuck, if if we're, if we're going to the Stanley Cup final, like I said, we're we're we're, in it, we're winning it because we beat that. That'll mean that we beat Colorado, which is the best team in the West, um, since like freaking Christmas. They've been so good this year. And they've been, this is actually the first time uh, past the second round, uh, Colorado's first time past the second round, and I can't remember how, like in a long, long time. And so um, they, they're they excited to be there, obviously, because McKinnon's never been there, just like McDavid's never been there. So this is the first time for a lot of, lot of the players involved. So 
everyone expects a high-flying, um, speedy series because I mean you got you got two of the two of the fastest teams, uh, I think, in the league going up against each other. So, go Oilers, go! Can't wait for tomorrow. Um, baseball news: Oh, Riverhawks starting soon. Give a shout out to the Riverhawks. Ja- uh, June sixth is our home opener. Come check us out. Tickets are like super, super cheap. I think they're like always like t- uh, 10 bucks for one of the games, but they go on average for like $15. So they're not even not even pricey at all. It's it's nice to be out in the evening. Uh, you know what I realized too, Caleb, though? Uh, some of these games might overlap as far as the Oilers and the Riverhawks games. So, oh, yeah? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I might have to make some arrangements, some some things, or some sacrifices. We'll see. Yeah. But the thing is, like, if there's an Oilers game, there's not there's not gonna be anyone at the at at the Riverhawks game. Like, the, yeah, exactly. Right. Um. But yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out when it when the when the time does come. Um. Actually, I do have the schedule here. Let me see. Because there's a day off. We we play three games and then we have a day off. Yeah. The Portland Pickles is who we play first. And let me see what the schedule is looking like for the NHL. So we, we play the Portland Pickles 6th, 7th, 8th of June. And then we play uh, on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we have Thursday off against the Port Angeles Lefties. These are all West Coast League teams. Um, I think we're the furthest East uh, team in the league. But we also have, from what I heard, the, the best facilities in the league, uh, no other team has a uh, ballpark like ours, and all the uh, uh, comedy uh, that that go with that, like the brand new screen, the the announcing, the music, the whole the whole fucking uh, caboodle or whatever the kids call it. So game three is on Saturday, uh, the fourth. Oh, and then game four, shit, is on that home opener. Damn. It's gonna suck for attendance there. I don't know. I gotta talk to Steve about this. Like you guys, like you guys do realize that the Oilers are playing that day, and then on Wednesday. So I might frick, and then probably on the Friday, right? Holy, I don't know how I'm gonna juggle this. I thought I'd be watching it in the booth, I guess. I'm not gonna miss it. Can't miss this. What what time does the game go till? These games will probably go till like nine thirty, but the 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 Oilers games start at six, so they start an hour early. So I'll be able to watch the beginning of the game. Oh no issue, but the end of the games, oh this is gonna be tricky, and and it's gonna be tricky for the Riverhawks too. I mean, obviously this is our first uh, first year of actually having the games, even though we were established in 2020. Um, but because of the pandemic and all that, we haven't played any games till this year. So obviously this is going to be, it's going to be a great year for us. But as far as attendance in these, in these first few games, and while the Oilers are in it, uh, it's going to be a bit of a juggling act. I got, I got to bring that up to Steve when I, when I go see him next, next week. Um, but yeah, Speak, uh, still on baseball, the Blue Jays finally, finally uh, get back in the winning winning column. They were skidding there for a little bit and struggling, but they have since uh, swept the Angels. They won 11-10 to 10 yesterday, and Vladdy has been uh, got a, finally got a couple, um, I think he got a, at least one home run I've seen, but he was struggling. He had like, he didn't have a home run like over two weeks. Uh, Jansen is back. He's cranking them out. Uh, I've been so busy that I haven't actually been watching too many of the games, just keeping track of the scores. But uh, yeah, the Angels, we took it to them in four games, a four game sweep. And that uh, brings us to 27 and 20, which is which is actually pretty good um, with four games, a four game winning streak. But I don't know, the Yankees are 33 and 15. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Still, it's still relatively early, but the Yankees had that like eleven game winning streak, so uh, they obviously still 
reaping the rewards of that. But yeah, go Blue Jays. I think we play again tonight against the White Sox. Nope, tomorrow uh, in in Toronto. Uh, probably catch maybe the beginning of that game if depending. I mean, if that game starts at five, what well, it start at six? Yeah, might uh, might miss that as well. But keeping track of them nonetheless. The NBA finals have been set. As well, it is the Boston Celtics advancing for the first time since what was it, 2010, I believe. Um, in Game Seven against against the Heat, and the, it's it's against the Golden State Warriors. I've seen some crazy stat like the Golden State Warriors, their team as a whole has like 123 games of Finals experience. And not not a single player on the Celtics have any experience in the finals, but I mean, here's your experience. Here's here's the time for your experience right now, and anything can happen. I mean, just because they have more experience in the finals doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win. But I hope to, I hope the I hope the Celtics win because Golden State has had enough uh, success in, in the in recent memory. So. Uh, Go, uh, go Celtics. Oh, yeah. Uh, other baseball news, though. Going back to baseball. Russell Martin, the Canadian, uh, officially retires after 14 seasons. He played for us in, in uh, 2015 16 when we made it to the playoffs. I remember seeing him hit a, hit a home run in the first game I've ever, first MLB game I was ever at. Uh, that was game three in 2016 against the Texas Rangers. Uh, I remember him hitting a home run, I think, in like the first or second inning, something like that. And I think it might have been my, the first home run I ever, first big league home run I've ever seen with my two eyes that I was at the game for. So uh, congrats on a on an excellent career, Russell. One of the best Canadian baseball players to ever play in the bigs. Um, just going through these... Headlines. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. Holy shit, Brad Marchand expected to miss six months after hip surgery. Good. No one likes him, anyways. Um. Oh yeah, the Elks. Uh, the the CFL finally came to an agreement. They like they came right down to like the last night before the preseason was supposed to start or whatever. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have CFL football this year. Hopefully, we win more than two games. Because I'm going to be going to more than zero games. <laughs> I didn't miss much last year if we only won two. But um, yeah, so that that's going to be uh, taking place. Yeah, that, that, that. Oh, yeah, Bichette. My boy Bichette launches a homer. Love him. Oh, Jason Spezza. Reti a lot of these retirements going on here. 19 years. Uh, he announces a retirement. He, he joins the Maple Leafs front office. What the? They just gave him a job like that, eh? Crazy. Oh, and Finland beats uh, Team Canada for gold in the uh, World Hockey Championships. Because uh, they didn't have McDavid. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, that's that's about it. I got uh, this week in sports history. What, did I got? what do I got here? I got uh, I had something. Let's see if I can find it. Um... Yeah, well, this is this is history in the making. This is history in the making. What the heck? Okay, so fewest games to fifty career points in the in the playoff history. So Gretzky did it in twenty three. This Barry Pedersen guy, I don't even know who he is. He did it in twenty eight. He's not even in the Hall of Fame. Mario Lemieux did it in twenty nine. Leon Draisaitl got to fifty career points in the playoffs in thirty three games. I mean, that's that's sports history right there. And that's this week in sports history. And this has been this week in sports. Thank you for listening. Go Oilers, go. Freaking cannot wait for this series to happen. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk next time. Peace.